Hey, everybody on the Pivot Shift Ahead page, it's your friend James Shaw. I trust you're doing okay. It's 2 p.m. on a Friday. What's going on? What are we doing over here on this page today? Uh, that's because we're going to do something fun and look at 20 lessons from 2020. So I have a handful of you on the Zoom, and we're also going to uh, watch on the Facebook page and just kind of go through and reflect uh, now that we're on the 20th day of November. And the most fascinating year of your life is in its uh, final 40 days or so, 40 or 50 days. So um, with that said, though, I want to open it like we open the daily call that we do. Um, well, it was daily, then it went weekly. And if you haven't heard, we're going back to daily starting on Monday. I want to hear is we'll start like we do all those calls. And you're going to tell me something great. So uh, raise your digital hand and I'll call on you and tell me something good that's happened to you in the last handful of days or the last week as we get started. Hey, Jack, I knew you'd be up there. What's up, buddy? <laughs> Hi, good morning, Jack, or good afternoon, Jack, South Keller Williams, Luxury in St. Pete. First, I want to thank you, James, for the incredible community you have created here. I have developed absolutely wonderful relationships. In fact, Kathy Hitty and her wife came over last night and had dinner with us. They're check taking a look at St. Petersburg to move to. So the opportunities you have given us all, the things you have taught us, the gratitude you have taught us, um, and the people that I have met on here have been absolutely unbelievable. I can't even, Alice is on here and Kathy's here and Sam. And certainly after your uh, class slowed down, we went over to Sam's script practice class with, um, oh my God, I'm drawing a blank on his name. Anyhow, the script practice guy that we did incredible work with. So I'm just grateful for all of you and, uh, and the life that you have given us. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Jack. You know, I just got off a call with Gary and Gary talked about the importance of community right now. And we, no doubt, we have created one here. So thank you, Jack, and thanks for being a part of it. Hey, Allison, good afternoon. Hey there, good afternoon from Kansas City. Um, I just came back from a home inspection, the second home that we've had under contract. The first home had so many things wrong with it and they still wanted to buy it. And then there turned out to be issues with the title. So. We've got a different house under contract and everything happens for a reason. Yeah. This house had the cleanest inspection ever. And uh, we've got to look for the, for the blessings and all the little weird things that happen. It's the joys of selling real estate in 2020. No doubt, Alice. And well, glad you're able to help them. Thanks for being on today. All right, Karen, tell us something great. And then we're going to get started into today's session. Go ahead. I've got so many things to be thankful for. 82 degree weather. <laughs> As you know, James, the weather's turned out awesome. But you it know, was so I, nice. Uh, you're not that far south of me, and yet we're five degrees cooler up here. It's only 77. I got to come uh, on down. We'll take it any way we can get it, won't we, for yeah. these poor people up north. But anyway, it was so nice. We have such a great team leader with Leah. Uh, woke up this morning, and she had delivered signs to our uh, yard congratulating us for uh, being in the top 20%. So, you know, what? how awesome is that for your team leader to go around and personally deliver a sign with that. So, and I've been welcome to the ALC this year. So I'm excited about being with that because I was on it in Louisville. We moved down here and so I finally was able to get back on this year. See, so, so you've moved, relaunched a business, gotten in the top 20% and on the ALC, congratulations. The Thank signs you. are cool. I saw the signs are shaped like a star. Yeah. <laughs> and you get to hang out with me in ALC clinic this week. Were you in there? I was. Oh, we had some fun in that. Awesome. It was a wonderful class. Karen. There you go. Yeah. So let me walk you through kind of the what's going to happen today. And, and as I was sitting here and reflecting um, over the last what, what 2020 has been like and what we thought it would be like and what it's become, I thought there's a lot of lessons to learn. And so I put out on uh, the Pivot Shift Ahead Facebook group for you to tell me what are your lessons. And I've compiled... 20 of them from you. These are all lessons that you've taught us over the last year that I just think are good to reflect. And, and, and the way to think about it is, uh, I, I don't, today is not a, ooh, write down some great system and go implement it and run it in your business. Today is about perspective. And I learned from John Maxwell this past week that the only true way that you can grow is if before, as you go into something, having, um, kind of a plan or perspective of what you'd like to accomplish. And then when you come out of it, reflecting. So you have preparation on the front end and reflection on the back end. And that's when you learn. 
when you have preparation on the front and reflection on the back. So this is just reflection. This is a chance for us to look back and see what have we learned from this year. So going into 2021, we can grow and get better. Now, I want to let you know of a couple of things. Um, if you're on the Facebook page right now, I want to let you know that we are uh, back to doing the daily call starting on Monday morning at 8 a.m. And it's going to be pivotshiftcall.com is the Zoom link. That's where you go. Pivotshiftcall.com to join us on Zoom uh, at 8 o'clock Eastern time. And we're going to do this through the end of the year. So you, you can jump on. I usually jump on the Zoom at about a quarter to eight. We do a little pre-show, just hang out and chat. And, and, and Jack, as Jack said, build some community. And then uh, we'll get in the call by eight. We're always done by 8.20 Eastern time. So we're going to start that back up on Monday. The other thing is on December 1st, I'm doing a business planning clinic. It's business planning in a pandemic. If that's something that would be of value to you, you're welcome to sign up. Uh, 2021bp.com, 2021bp.com if you want to do that. So that's December 1st. All right. So I'm going to share the screen because I have made a fancy PowerPoint. Y'all are going to be so excited to see this. Look at this right here. If this isn't fancy, I don't know what is. And these are our uh, lessons from 2020. And I'll offer some perspective on these. And if you want to jump in at any point, those of you on the Zoom want to jump in at any point and just share um, you know, what, what your perspective might be for one of these, that's totally fine with me. 20 lessons from 2020. And again, like I said, I got them from you. I asked you for your lessons from the year and you shared all of these in the Pivot Shift Ahead community. And, uh, and I just think there's so much value. So let's take a look here at the first one. Whoop, there we go back. There we go. I love this one from Nicholas. That the, the, his lesson from 2020, that often what we first see as a huge loss or disappointment can lead to our greatest awakening. You know, I've said before that I believe that when we go back and we think about 2020, a few years from now, there are going to be some things that we enjoyed. If you go back to April and May, at the end of March, April and May, when my eight-year-old daughter, Naomi, was sent home from school, uh, I have got to have lunch with my wife and my daughter every single day in March, April, May, June, J July, and most of August. And that came after six years of being on the road every single week. So I think about the awakening that I had about that value of connection with my family. So I love that from Nicholas. We all, that often what we first see as a huge loss or a disappointment can lead to our greatest awakening. Love that. Let's take a look at the next one. Michelle, win the day, then the week, and winning the month will happen. When you win the day and then the week, winning the month will happen. Now, it's really easy for us to get caught up in what do I want to accomplish in 2020? Or what do I want to pull off in 2021? What's my goal going to be? And, and, and we dial it down to month and we dial it down. To, and yet here's the deal. Just win right now. All you got to do is win right now. And when you win right now, everything will work out. And, and, and I would add to Michelle's, and I love this from Michelle. So Michelle, I'm so thankful you shared it with me. I would add win the day by noon. When you win the day by noon, then you'll absolutely win the week and you'll win the month and then you will win the year. And for us, we know what it is. It's a handful of things that we've got to do every day, right? Lead, generate, uh, uh, lead follow-up, go on appointments, negotiate contracts, pr script practice, and role play. If we can win that by noon, we're in really good shape. So Michelle, love that one. Thank you so much. Tammy Fox. I love Tammy. Tammy, you sent me a real nice email yesterday, and thank you so much for doing that. I've got so much gratitude for you. Uh, care calls are for every day, not just a pandemic. Folks, we introduced the idea of a care call back in March. And we said, pick up your phone, call every single person you know in that database and check in on them, ask how they're doing. And it's the three C's is the system we use, care, compassion, and common sense. And if you call and you ask them, how are you? How's your family? What's going on? How's everything at work? What's happening there? And then they bring up real estate. Well, what's going on in the real estate market? What's happening with that? Then that's the common sense tells you whether or not to talk about real estate. Here's the point Tammy's making though. And I believe she's right. Care calls are the only lead generation calls you actually ever have to make if you're truly connected with your database and have built a sense of community. The only thing you really ever have to do is call and say, how you doing? How's the family? What's going on? And they'll bring up real estate as long as they know that's what you do. So there you go. Those are the first three. I love these. I hope you like them too. 
Uh, anyone want to share? Is there a takeaway already in the first three? Who wants to, and just speak up, don't raise your hand because I'm not going to be able to call on you with the way my screen is. And if you're watching on Facebook, type them in the chat box too. What's the takeaway so, so far? Let me hear from those of you watching on Zoom. So James, I was wondering about the, how the care calls and the three C's also ties in with Ford in that. What do you think with that? No, you're exactly right. Forward is, and that's family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. It's a conversation model, Brent, and, and it, it's exactly what we do. And that, that is the care call. How's your family, right? How are things at work? What is it you've been doing for fun during all this time? I mean, Brent, you're in California. Like, things are tough there, and, and you're in, what, in Orange County, right? Wait, Riverside, yeah. You're in Riverside County. So in Riverside, I mean, it's tough in Southern California right now. And, and so people maybe aren't doing the things for fun they wanted to do or their job isn't going they wanted it to go. And yet if you check in and are truly dialed in and in relationship, Brent, uh, yeah, the Ford turns into the care call and boom, your opportunity shows up. I love that. Thank you so much. Great. Appreciate Thanks. it, Brent. Good to see you. I, no, I, no would, Superman like to, I would like so, to share something also. Yeah, go ahead, Giovanna. Um, I think that uh, this 2020, helped me to really discover myself. Um, you know, in the middle of the crisis, I found that the best, the best version of, of myself. And, um, and I, well, it was very hard in the beginning because I was having such an amazing time and suddenly all this happened. And then um, I discovered that, it, that you can grow uh to the extent that you expose yourself to the new challenges that's uh, exactly giovanna this goes back to what nicholas says in the very first one that you know what might be a huge loss or disappointment can lead to a great awakening and and i'll tell you i was just on a call with with gary keller and he said that i gotta find it in my notes the path to growing your business is growing you your business can never exceed you and, and so when we grow, our opportunity grows. Thanks, Giovanna, appreciate you being on. Let's take a look at the next three. And I love, I hope you like this. I thought this would be a fun way to look at it. So here's the fourth lesson, Christy Byers. And she's always been a great supporter, been on all the calls, I love Christy. She said, I learned that who you surround yourself with matters. Your five, and she's talking about the five people closest to you. Your five should be people who lift you, tell you the absolute truth, motivate you and inspire you. And I also learned that I'm strong enough to face whatever life throws my way. We got this has been my motto. I love that. And Giovanna, that goes into some of what you're saying too, right? Who you hang out with and what you're doing matters. You've got it. That's why I think this pivot shift ahead community matters too, because you've got a group of, you know, we are uh, almost 80,000 strong in this Facebook page. We've got a group of people that want to move forward. That's the bottom line. Let's take a look at the next one. Nakia, I think, Nakia, are you on? Yes, sir. Uh, well, you're quoted. Look at this. Stay the course and be inspired by those around you to think big and work toward your dreams. Small, consistent action over time compounds to massive results in the future. Stick with it. Tell me why you put that lesson in here. Well, because honestly, I've been during this time part of my focus has been really personal development, right? Because like I put in the comments, your business grows to the extent that you do and we could focus on the problem or all the things that we can't do or we focus on what we can. And I was reading Atomic Habits and he talks about just, and with the one thing, the two inch domino, all those things kind of work together. When you pick the right activity and you line up your dominoes so that they knock them down, it's amazing what we can accomplish just by really what we focus on. And I think my favorite example, obviously, because um, becoming debt free this year has been a, um, a focus for us. And we became completely consumer debt free during a pandemic, not necessarily selling more real estate, just being more mindful of what we're doing with the money that comes in already. I've also helped other people do the same. So just that one thing, like taking the focus off of not the things that I can't do, but really what's the one thing that I can do such that by doing it, it makes everything else easier or necessary. And oh, it really just yeah. works no matter what you look at. 
You're my favorite. I love it. Thank you so much. Great perspective. Congratulations on a great 2020. Let's keep going. Here's the next one. I love this. Consistency breed results. And I put this one here to follow Nakia's because she said something very similar. Small consistent action over time compounds. And here you see consistency breeds results. And here's something I believe. Success will come to those who are obsessed with being consistent. Success will come to those who are obsessed with being consistent. If you have your handful of things that you're going to do every day and you're going to do them consistently, success absolutely comes your way. All right, let's take a look at the next three. Martha Hernandez, she learned, this is her lesson. Again, those of you just jumping on Facebook or on Zoom, we're looking at 20 lessons from 2020. Here's Martha's. Her lesson is how quickly our lives can change and there are some things we can't change or control. However, uh, how we react though, we can control. We get to decide how we respond and react to the experiences around us. We can't control what the government's doing, what the market's doing, uh, any of that kind of stuff. What we can control is how we react. I love that one from Martha. Next, Debbie Latuga. In times of stress, focus on self-care. The benefits are critical to maintaining a positive mindset. You know, I know we don't get on airplanes anymore. I haven't been on one since March. Uh, when I was on them every week, though, I could have done the safety announcement. And they always say that, in the unlikely event that there's a change in cabin pressure, a mask will drop from the ceiling of compartment above your head. Pull it down and place it over your nose and mouth first before helping the person next to you. Self-care is critical, Debbie says. The next one, and then I want to hear from a few of you, is mindset is mental health. That's her lesson from 2020. Mindset is mental health. So what are you doing again to take care of you? I thought these tied in together. Let's hear from a couple of you watching on Zoom. And those of you on Facebook, type it in the chat. Those of you on, on Zoom, though, just speak up and tell me what's a takeaway for you based on what we've heard so far. Well, you know, from bold, we learned that 90% of everything is mindset, right? And there are bold laws around it, how you look at, change the way you look at things and the things you look at change. And it really, really, because we have so much time now, less time in our cars, less time ripping and running, we have time to kind of slow down and really be within our own minds to focus on having healthy thoughts and knowing that, again, our cells eavesdrop on our thoughts and being mindful of what it is that we're putting in them. I love it. That's genius. Thanks, Nakia. You always chime in and share. I love that. All right, let's take a look at the next three. Desiree said this is her lesson from 2020. To feel things out and funnel my energy where needed most, be mindful and purposeful. In other words, dive in on the things that matter that are going to give you results, make you feel good. I said on a call the other day, only do things that are going to either lift you up or move you forward, right? So choose to participate and be around people and watch things that lift you up and move you forward. If they don't lift you up and move you forward, they're out. I believe that to be true. Desiree would agree. Here's the next one, Abraham Walker. I love his perspective all the time. This man asks great questions. And, and here's what he says here. His lesson from 2020, this too shall pass. Focusing on the problem keeps you thinking about the present. Focusing on the solution moves you into the future. Hang a star on that one and write that one down. Focusing on the problem keeps you in the present. Focusing on the solution moves you into the future. I don't know, raise your uh, real or digital hand if you're ready to move into the future where we can see people again and hang out and travel and, and, and hug our friends and all that kind of stuff. So thank you, Abraham, for that one. Here's the next one. Carol, patience and grace with myself and others, she says. Patience and grace with myself and others. And I think grace is a key word. I don't know if Ro Coleman's on this call or not. And Ro said that's her word of the year is grace. You know, just give yourself some of that. All right, I wanna open it up from these three. Somebody on the Zoom, share with me what sticks out to you. And if you're on the Facebook, type it in the chat. What's the lesson right here for you? Anybody? And you just Abraham, start, you can't see the, the hands. Hey, Abraham's um, post actually absolutely the best so far, although they are all fantastic, James. Yeah. Focusing, being able to focus on what's going on, what we can do and get the solution makes all the difference in the world. And starting the days with you and this group of Pivot Shift Ahead has made a humongous difference. Oh, Marianne, so I, think I, I think you're great. I think you Thank it. you. 
Yeah, you got it. I think you did. And by the way, thanks for being flexible on the time for today. Um, the, the truth is, yeah, we get to choose what we focus on. So decide, make the decision and focus on something that helps you. I love it. All right, let's keep going. Kathleen, focus on your one thing that brings you the most business and be the best at that one thing. Excel in that area. You can't be the best at four or five things. And while you are doing your one thing, bring value to others. In 2020, that's my biggest aha. When you bring values to others, it's about them. It's not about you. And I'll add to what Kathleen says, and I don't know if Kathleen's on. A lot of times she is. Um, I would add that when you focus on other people, and I'm sure you've heard the saying, I think it's Zig Ziglar said, when you get, you know, when you help people get everything they want, you'll get everything you want in return. She's saying that here, and then narrow your focus into the one thing that matters. Love it, Kathleen. Thanks so much for that. Ellie, you always do. Your contribution in your community online and offline. The reason I like this one from Ellie is because Gary Keller has told us we are going to have to be, you know, digitally based and physically enhanced right now figuring out how can we connect with people and create community in a digital space because that's the safest way to do it right now. So I love that from Ellie. Here's the next one from Carol is I can sell real estate anywhere with leverage people, video, online and referrals. And uh, Carol is in New York and they struggled in New York at the beginning of this pandemic. Things were definitely a challenge and yet through technology, she's able to expand and help people all over the globe. Let's keep going. Dawn, my care calls enabled my clients and I to bond on a higher level this year. It's all about how you make someone feel, she says. And, and here's the truth on that. Again, let's remember that the people in our database are people that are experiencing challenges and issues just like we are. And uh, look, if we can make them feel better, give them a little grace and move them forward, our opportunity shows up. And then Isabel said, the only thing we're in control of is inside us. We talked about that earlier. We can't control everything around us. Hey, on Facebook, by the way, Michelle Bennett, this is so great. I love what you said. Life isn't about you, even when you want it to be. Something comes along and shifts your course, but if your purpose is to serve others, you'll fly through any change. That's, our, that's a bonus. That's now we have 21 lessons from 2020, right? Because she's given us a bonus. Let's keep going. Michelle Mendoza, it's a bold law. What you focus on expands, also allowing everybody to be heard, particularly when doing care calls. So helpful to be coming from contribution when connecting with my database. I love that from Michelle. And then I'll add from Mary, lead with gratitude for who and what I have, not a wish for what I don't. I knew it before, I lived it in 2020, and I'll carry it forward. That's 19 of them. I'm going to give you the 20th and then we're going to talk about them. Kathy. Kathy in Miami. We love Kathy. She says, chaos created opportunities so quickly. We had to learn to pivot fast and simply come from gratitude and make care calls, care zooms. We connected with our sphere with genuine care. The pivot zoom Facebook calls were instrumental in bringing our network together like one big team. Our unity was overwhelming. And I remember crying after one of the first calls. I cried on one, on one of them. It hit me like a ton of bricks, she says. We are indeed more alike than different. And figuring, out, and figuring that out was such value and hope that we will come out stronger than ever on the other side. I thought that was a great one to end with on the 20 lessons. I want to bring it back to the group of you. We have about 75 of you watching on the Zoom. And I want to hear from you. What are the takeaways? Raise your digital hand and I'll call on you and tell me what are the takeaways and other lessons. Ronnie? So James, thank you. So today on our daily call with Sam, I actually said this, you know, guys, whether you joined this call today or back in March, James, thank you because you prepared us for what's coming up. We're ready. And oh my God, I don't know what's going to happen next week. What else can you give us? to make us move forward. So I feel us, this community, we're ready to take on the challenge. We don't care. We already know what to do and you can only enhance what, what you've already started. So thank you, my friend. Yeah, you got it, Ronnie. We have a head start. We started these calls back in March. And as you go to the Publix, Ronnie, I don't know if you've been to your Publix in Orlando, you go in there, there's no toilet paper, right? There's no toilet paper or paper towels. 
It feels like April and May all over again. And yet we are prepared. We're out in front because we've lived this before and we're not going to freak out. And truth is, I saw some data today. 2020 is probably going to be the best year in the history of real estate in America. OMG. In, in a pandemic, it'll end up probably being the best year. There's so much opportunity, Ronnie. You're exactly right. Appreciate it. Allison? Um, I have a reminder every morning um, that the words that I chose for 2020 are grateful and happy. And there have been times when mm -hmm. that is not how I felt. And then I realized that it was a choice to go back to feeling grateful and happy. And um, I just choose it every day. And you have helped me choose oh, that thank you. by helping me find the good in things. I'm happy to do it. And, and ultimately you get to make the decision. And it's so easy to get focused on everything that's not working and everything that's tough. And that's why was it Abraham that Abraham that said that that you know you get if you're focused on the problems you're in the present if you're focused on the opportunities or the solutions you're into the future, and Allison you get to make that choice every day. And I also I gotta say though let's go back to the word grace. We're gonna have days that stink. There's no doubt about it. We're gonna have days that wake up and they just aren't our, our day, and we've got to give ourselves a little bit of grace to know you know what today kind of sucked and it's okay. I'm gonna get after it tomorrow. Thank you, Allison. I appreciate you. Hey, Lee Corey. Hey there. So I just have comfort, um, James, in you saying that you're feeling something and we're bringing back this call. And the comfort I'm feeling is that this community, we've done it before and we can do it again. I think that's what Ronnie was saying. Um, Brent, I went to Costco today, right after my calls this morning, um, and they were hoarding. They were hoarding again. So it's coming. I know it's coming even up here. Yeah. yeah, I know. Well, and you, you hear states of putting things into place to, and, 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 you know, I don't want to get political and yet I believe them when they make a decision like that, that's to keep its citizens safe and, um, and they're hard decisions. And yet when we start to hear of curfews coming in or, or restrictions on capacity in certain places or what have you, um, that's going to make some people get really scared. And I think what we have to remember in this community is there's no reason to be scared because we have proven already, Lee, that when we get together and we get our mindset focused right in the morning, then we can accomplish anything in the afternoon. It's absolutely true. Uh, thank you so much, Lee. Hey, Masha said on Facebook, Masha's from Chapel Hill. She said, we're a community all on our own and we've done a superb job of being supportive of each other and through this year, it's been a huge blessing to me and I'm grateful for all of you and I would echo what she's saying. Hey, Maria. Hello, uh, thank you for the opportunity. I wanted to share that when all of this happened, um, the realization that our life as we knew it had changed, gave me the energy and the, the courage to reinvent myself. I, I decided that if I could be first at whatever uh, new uh, venue I decided to do, I would gain market share and going online allowed me to redesign my life. So, um, 2020 has been a blessing for me. This call has been a blessing because you have kept us motivated and kept us our minds open to the opportunity. And I want to thank you uh, for all of that you've done. And you have created opportunities for us. So I I'm very grateful to you. Thank, thank you, Maria. You, you know, the thing that I think is great, and I, I got to say this um, with, with this disclaimer, um, as long as you've been healthy and your family's been healthy and everybody's good in your household, I actually think you'll look back on 2020 and be thankful for what you experienced. And I say that with the utmost respect to the families of the quarter of a million people who've lost their lives and the 12 million people who've gotten ill from this, from this virus in our country. Um, and yet to the, those of you on here, if you have not been impacted personally, I think you will. I think you can look back and go, I'm thankful for this because here's what I think it did as an industry is it moved us forward five years in about five months. And now Maria, what we've done is we've become more efficient with our time. We've learned how to show houses on zoom. We've learned how to meet with people on zoom, get contracts signed. Uh, electronically, if you're with KW, you've learned how command can be your partner in supporting you through these things. And you can sell more homes in less time because of the things you learned here. And I think there's elements of that that will continue once we do get back to 
whatever pre-COVID stuff comes back again, where we get to go see people and things. So thank you, Maria. Appreciate you. Hey, Brent, I'll come to you. And then I think your wife has a thought too. I'm going to come to you first though. Okay, great. I love that. The focus on problems keeps you in the present, but focus on solutions move you into the future. And I, I think of that, that, little biblical verse that Paul talked about is forgetting what's behind and straining forward for what is ahead and and how our industry was the one that held us behind back in 2008 and now we're the ones leading the charge and you've created this Facebook group and this whole group of us to prepare us to lead forward and so the encouragement for everyone is go be that person that can lead others forward yeah, it's true. Look, we need connection and, and we need, sometimes we just need a little bit of motivation. And so who you're supporting and helping will lead to that. I love it. Hey, uh, Alice, did you think of what you wanted to say? You got to outsmart, you got to outsmart Brent. <laughs> That's easy. <laughs> no, I just wanted to give Brent some kudos too. Brent and I come, we have a, a pretty good life. We have a pretty good life with nothing to complain about. But you know what? I, I have a little bit of depression. And so I'm glad you're bringing this out. And I told Brent, I was tears be, uh, because of a few COVID things and this and that. I'm sure a lot of people are going through the same thing. And Brent said, you know, Alice, we could either, we're going to go through this. We can go through this being happy and positive, or we can go through this being depressed and miserable. What are we going to choose? So we're going to choose, you know, to hang out with people like you at five in the morning to put all the good stuff in and to just be a light and to just get through this time. We're, we're gonna do it together and we love hanging out with all of you. Thank you, you know, very much. Alice, thank you, thank you so much. And, and again, I, I, you know, look, everybody is going through it. Mm -hmm. Every single person is going through it. And, and I think we have, if we can check in on our people and, and this is why I, just, I believe firmly, the care call is the only call to make right now, please. Do not pick up the phone and call, hi, I noticed your home is for sale and it didn't sell. When are you going to move? I, I think that is so insensitive right now. I think if you call and check in and see how people are doing, because everyone has fatigue of this, right. everyone's over it. And yet it's, there's, there's, there's some light at the end of the tunnel, you know, Pfizer's going to apply for emergency approval today. And, and yet I'm listening on the radio and, and it's like, when I see who I am and where I fit in the order in which people are going to get the vaccine, like it's a while and I don't need it right away. And, and, and so I think we have to remember though that everyone has fatigue and this is gonna go on for a while. And so let's call and check in on our people and see, ask them, how are you doing emotionally? <laughs> you know, how are you doing physically? How's your physical health? And how are you doing financially? Because those are the three areas that people don't wanna discuss. They don't want to discuss how they're doing emotionally. They don't want to discuss how they're doing physically. And they don't want to discuss how they're doing financially. They want to keep it all right here. And if you can be the one that helps them get some of that out and you can say, I, you know what? I'm right with you. And here's what's helped me. Now you become a light to that person, Alice. You become a light to be able to move that person forward and give them some hope right now, which I think is what they need more than anything else. Um, this is a good time. I would say it's probably a good time to get back together and have some database uh, Zoom happy hours and check it, do an ugly Christmas sweater Zoom or, or who's gonna be the first one to do an ugly Christmas sweater face mask Zoom party, okay? Cause that's where it's gonna be, right? Get, you get an ugly Christmas sweater face mask. I mean, you can have some fun and, and yet check in on people and see how they're doing. Because we already know that during the holidays, depression goes up already during that time. If you add this to it, I'm telling you check in. You might be the only one who calls them because I don't know. I, and I'm sorry, I'm getting a little preachy and it's not even Tuesday morning. My phone is not ringing off the hook with people going, James, how are you doing? Is, is yours? Anybody on this thing, your phone ringing off the hook? You can barely talk to all the people wanting to check in and see how you are. You got to get back to them. I believe it more than anything. All right. Enough, enough from me. Mindy, you're up. What's up? Yeah, for me, um, when you talked about the care calls early on and the care, the compassion and the common sense, I had a deal that closed this morning and my co-broke texted me yesterday that he was in a car accident and his truck was in horrible condition. And 
Oh, Mindy, we've lost you. At least I have. Is that true for anybody else? Yeah, we've lost you. Yeah, we've lost your internet, Mindy. I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. So look, she's still going though. She thinks it's all fun. Co -broke. Can hear Oops, it. I think I'm back. Oh, sorry Mindy, about you're that. Back. Okay, Mindy. Right, sorry so about your, that. Your co broke. Your Was co broke a car, had a car accident. Right. So this morning he texts me, he's not coming to the closing. And I called him up. I said, How are you doing? He goes, I'm okay. I go, No, no, no. I mean, really, how are you really doing? And that's what I learned from making the calls because people superficially will say, I'm fine. But when you say, no, I mean, really, how are you really doing? That's when they let their guard down. Yeah. Well, you come from a place of understanding and you truly build connection that way. Well, friends, I, I trust that this is of some value. I said, I just wanted to have some fun and give you 20 lessons from the year uh, and just have a chance to chat. Here's a couple reminders. Uh, pivotshiftcall.com. Pivotshiftcall.com is the Zoom link for the daily call. It resumes on Monday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern. I guess I should put that in my calendar. It's not even in my schedule. And you know the bold law, if it's not in your schedule, it doesn't exist. So I need to put it in there. So pivotshiftcall.com at 8 o'clock Eastern for about 20 minutes. We'll jump on Zoom at about 7.45 if you ever want to jump on it early. And of course, as always, we'll live stream it right here sure. into the Pivot Shoot Ahead Facebook Is page. Is there a good number for him to call you back in? And then, oh, hold on, Beth. Hold on. I know Beth's helping somebody. And then finally, on December 1st, I'm going to do business planning in a pandemic because I think the way we look at our goals... Um, this year is different than what you've done in previous years. So we're going to take a look at it a little bit differently. And uh, that is uh, 2021bp.com, uh, 2021bp.com, if that's something you'd like to take with me. Hey, thank you, friends. Everybody watching on the Facebook, everybody on the Zoom. Have a wonderful weekend. Be safe. Have fun. Thanks, I'll see James. you Monday, everybody. Thanks, have a James. good one. You. you got it. Bye-bye. Have a great weekend. See you.